In this video, we're going to talk about shoe rotations and why they're so important. I'm also going to go through Nike's 2023 performance running line, and I'm going to talk about my own Nike shoe rotation. Now, I'm going to be talking a lot about Nike shoes in this video, but the principles and the ideas that I'm talking about, about building a shoe rotation, will apply to any brand or any combination of brands that you want to build your own shoe rotation out of. So if that sounds interesting, stick around and let's dive in. Why is a shoe rotation important? Why should you care? Well, there's primarily four benefits to rotating your shoes or having a group of shoes that you can rotate on a weekly basis. The first one is around foot health. Think about it this way. If you run in the same shoe day in and day out, your feet and legs are getting one kind of stimulus. They're hitting the ground and in the same way every time. And over time, that can lead to an overuse injury. If you're rotating different shoes with different foams or different stacks and different outsoles, your feet and legs are getting different stimulus, which overall will add strength and durability to you as a runner, which are very important things. The second one is durability for your shoes themselves. Again, if you're running in the same shoe day in and day out, that foam is getting constantly compacted and it never has a chance to rebound because you're in it day in and day out. If you're rotating multiple shoes on a weekly basis, you can let the shoe rest which will allow the foam to rebound, which means the next time you wear it, it'll feel um, normal. It'll feel like the performance you remember when you first put it on. The third one is shoes or tools. So if you put in a lot of effort to train, you want a fast shoe, say, to race or to do that key workout in your plan. So look at shoes as tools. You want the right tool for the right job. And the last will be it's a good way to learn your preferences. Over time as a runner, you're gonna learn which shoes you like, and you're gonna have a list of a few shoes that you love. So when you look at a new shoe, even in a new brand, you're gonna be like, well, I like this shoe, and this shoe's kind of like that, so I might wanna try that one. So it just helps you learn what you're gonna like and what's gonna work for you over time. When you're building a shoe rotation, what should you be looking for? Specifically for road running, I think that comes down to four key categories. And I'm gonna go through them, in the order of importance that I think they have. The first one's gonna be your daily trainer. This is that shoe that you can do anything and everything in, and it's gonna be the bulk of your miles on a weekly basis. The next shoe you're gonna to wanna to look at is a race shoe. This is a shoe you put on for those you know, races to really maximize the performance from the training that you did in your daily trainer. Third shoe you're gonna to wanna to look at will be a tempo trainer. Now this shoe sits somewhere between your race shoe and your daily trainer. It's maybe not as aggressive as your race shoe. It's maybe not as uh, neutral, let's say, as your daily trainer, but it's something that's gonna allow you to get the maximum out of those you know, tempo workouts. You can do this tempo in your race shoe, but with the wealth of options that we have for tempo trainers in the market, it's it's usually a good shoe to have, particularly if you're doing longer racing where your tempo your tempo runs tend to be a little bit longer. It just allows you to save your race shoe for race day. And then the last category will be a cushion trainer. Uh, this is that super soft, really plush, really protective shoe that you put on when your legs need a little extra TLC or you need a little extra something to get out the door on those big weeks. This is the shoe you reach for. So now that we've talked about the four categories, let's look at Nike's 2023 performance running line and figure out where each model fits in. So starting with the daily trainers, really the heart and soul, if you will, of the Nike running line altogether is the Pegasus model. For 2023, that's the Pegasus 40. The Pegasus is a React midsole with an airbag in the heel and the forefoot with a full rubber outsole. It's very neutral, it's a very natural feel, and it's it's just the quintessential daily trainer to me. It's the baseline that I compare everything else against. The next shoe will be the Infinity React 3. Now, there might be an update to this later this year. There's not a lot of detail about anything um, coming out for it yet, but I've seen a few rumors about it. But the Infinity React series is a little bit more substantial shoe. It's got more React foam in the midsole. It's pure React foam, foam. there's no airbags in this. Uh, it's got a little structure in the heel and it's got a rocker geometry which helps move you from heel to toe. If you like a more substantial, a little bit more structured shoe, this is a good daily trainer option from Nike. The next one is the Windflow 10. 
Now this shoe is a bit of a bridge between Nike's budget line and their performance line. It's definitely a performance shoe. It's similar to the Pegasus, but the midsole is Cushalon. And for 2023, it's actually Cushalon 3.0. It's a new formulation of Cushalon, which means this shoe is a little bit softer. It's a little bit heavier, but it's also a little bit more durable. So it's a good option if you're looking for those options. The last one in the daily trainer category would be the Turbo Next Nature. Now, this shoe uses ZoomX, uh, recycled ZoomX in the midsole. So it's a little bit firmer than pure ZoomX that you would find in, in Nike's race shoes. But this is a great option if you're looking for a shoe to do your runs in, your daily runs in, but also maybe wear to the gym and also maybe wear casually. This is a good shoe that sort of does all of that very well. And if you're looking for that, this is probably the one you want to go for. So moving to the race shoes, really Nike's quintessential and, and top end race shoe right now is the Alpha Fly. For 2023, it's still the Alpha Fly 2. Now we did see an Alpha Fly 3 at the Tokyo Marathon a few weeks ago. That may or may not be coming out in 2023. We don't know. But the, the Alpha Fly will still be the top end, the most tech in the, the Nike running line, whether it's the Alpha Fly 2 or 3. Now this is full Zoom X, carbon plate. It's also got AirPods uh, under the carbon plate. This is Nike's long distance racer. The next shoe in this racing line would be the Vaporfly. For 2023, it's the Vaporfly 3. It's the newest update. This is Nike's go anywhere, do anything race shoe. You can take this from the mile up to the marathon and it's gonna perform extremely well across all of those races. Again, full Zoom X midsole, carbon fiber plate, super lightweight it is a very versatile racer and then the last race shoe uh, that we need to talk about will be the streak fly now this is this is a zoom x midsole but there is no carbon plate in this shoe it does have a midfoot uh, torsion shank which gives you some torsion uh, control uh, some rigidity in the shoe and also gives you a little pop on toe off but this is really Nike's racer geared more towards the 5 and 10K side of things. Moving to the tempo trainer category, we have the Zoomfly 5, which may see an update this year. If it does, it's probably going to be a pretty minor update, probably just an upper. The, the midsole will stay the same. This is also a plated shoe with um, recycled ZoomX in, in the midsole with a carrier foam around it. It is a really durable tempo trainer for the longer uh, tempo work that you would do. Um, it typically has always um, been parallel to the, the Vaporfly series, but I think nowadays Nike's designed the Zoomfly 5 to go either direction. If you race in the Alpha Fly or the Vaporfly, the Zoomfly 5 is really gonna work for you. We also have the Tempo in the Tempo Trainer line. Now this shoe did disappear from Nike for a while, but it seems to be coming back. And there are rumors that there could be a Tempo 2 coming out this year. This shoe shares a lot of the technology with the Alpha Fly. Again, there is a carbon plate in this. It is a mix of ZoomX and React Foam, and it does have the AirPods. So if you're racing the Alpha Fly, this may be the better Tempo Trainer for you as from a technology standpoint and a feel standpoint, there's a relationship. And moving down to the cushion trainer category for Nike in 2023, that really means the Invincible, specifically the Invincible 3 this year. I think with this Invincible 3 redesign, there's been a lot of versatility added to this shoe and this shoe can do a lot more than I think the previous models could. In fact, a lot of people do use this now as their daily trainer. And I think it's a nice sort of um, companion shoe to any one of the daily trainers that you see above it. Also within the cushion trainer category, we'll have the Vomero 17 that will be coming out uh, later this year. That shoe is still a very cushioned shoe, but it's maybe a little bit more durable for maybe much more use in longer miles. Now that we've gone through Nike's line, let's take the same categories. And now I'm gonna walk through how I build a shoe rotation that I run in on a weekly basis using Nike uh, shoes. Now I've run in this rotation for quite a long time. It's been at least three or four years that I've run in some variant of this rotation, but it's it's always worked for me. And I'm going to walk through sort of my thinking as to why I choose the models that I choose for each category in the effort to kind of help you begin to think about 
how you can create a short list of what's important for you for each of these categories so that you can find the right shoe for you. So starting with the daily trainer, when I'm thinking of a daily trainer, I want a very natural flex. I want to feel the ground. So I want some ground feel. I want it to be unobtrusive and I want it to be very versatile, which right now that's the Pegasus 40 hands down. This is by far the shoe that I spend the most time in. Um, and I, if I don't know what to, what to grab or say I'm going away for the weekend and I'm only going to grab one shoe, this is the one I go for. This is my do everything, go anywhere shoe. And I, I to me, the peg is the quintessential daily trainer that just works everywhere for everything I needed, needed to do. Now, going up to the race category, what I'm looking for is ultra lightweight, responsive, propulsive, and protective. Again, I'm a marathoner primarily. So I want a shoe that is super lightweight, that makes me feel fast, and then does have that protection which becomes particularly important towards the end of a longer race. And for me, that's the Vaporfly. Specifically, I'm looking forward to the Vaporfly 3. This is, I've raced in the Vaporfly for many years, and this, this by far is the shoe that I will always reach for, because like I said, I want a race shoe that makes me feel fast. The Vaporfly makes me feel fast. And based on performances I've had on in the past, I know that it's gonna get the job done for me. I want all of that combination in a race shoe. Now, when you look at these two shoes together, a daily trainer and a race shoe, this traditionally has been the rotation for many years. You could get away with just these two shoes and you'd be totally fine. You don't need a lot of shoes to make a rotation. If you have a daily trainer and a race shoe, you've got really the foundation of everything you need. You don't have to really add anything else. Adding other shoes here is really going to sort of you know, maximize maybe training or give you some options on race day. But the core of the rotation to me is the daily trainer of the Pegasus and the race shoe of the Vaporfly. Now, the third shoe that I add in here would be a tempo trainer. And tempo has short and long to me. So on the short side, those are those quick effort, short intervals, you know, heel reps, speed work, all of that stuff. And to get that work done, I go to the streak fly. I think the Streak Fly is by far the best shoe for that. It's lightweight, it's flexible, so it's giving me all of the training benefit of building foot and leg strength, really feeling the ground, really perfecting my form and my stride. The Streak Fly is probably the shoe that I do most of the mechanics work in of my form, and it is perfect for that. I, I, I to me, the Streak Fly is probably the best shoe Nike makes. Um, and it's the one I rely on for most of the high effort work that I do um, year round. Now, on the longer side of tempo work, you know, we're looking at, you know, 20 mile plus runs in a marathon build, you know, uh, five by five by five sort of repeats, that kind of stuff. I actually go on and, and depend on the Alpha Fly for that, and specifically the Alpha Fly 2. Um, again, I, I, I think Nike's tempo trainers are totally fine, but I personally prefer uh, doing my tempo work in these two ratios because I find them more fun to run in. And specifically with the Alpha Fly, since it is such a good ratio, it's, it's just an excellent shoe for locking into a pace and staying there, which is exactly what you want in marathon training. And, and frankly, that's what you want in a marathon. So by having an Alpha Fly and a Vapor Fly in my rotation, that gives me a lot of options on race day to really figure out what's going to be best for me. On the shorter races, I, I don't do a lot of shorter races, but if I did, I doubt I'd actually race in the Streak Fly because when, when the Vapor Fly exists, I just don't know where I'd ever pick the Streak Fly to race in. But for a training tool, I love it because I don't always want to train, particularly tempo work, in a plated shoe either. So the Streak Fly not having a carbon fiber plate in it again, is perfect for me. And then the last category here would be the cushion trainer. For me, that's something that I want it to be plush. I want shock absorbing and I want it to be durable. And for 2023, that really is the Invincible 3. I think with the Invincible 3 this year, Nike has added a ton of versatility to the Invincible. And I'm using it now for things that I never would have considered using the Invincible 1 or 2 for. I am using it for some daily training now. 
I do take it on longer runs, like half marathon distance and above runs, something I never would have taken the uh, Invincible 1 or 2 on. So I think now if you look at this this rotation, this is really just five shoes. And yes, it's a it's a fairly large rotation, but you don't need anything else here. This really covers every single base you have from fast to easy, from long to short. You can do everything in these shoes. So thank you for making it to the end of the video. I hope this was insightful and informative. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any further questions about building a rotation or even Nike shoes in general. I'll try to answer everything that I can. As always, please like and subscribe. It helps a new channel significantly. And with that, I will see you next time.